much for being here today. I really, really appreciate you talking to us and comfortable in your skin. So I'd like to say when and where I first met Jenny, and I honestly can't remember, I just feel like I've known you for forever, really. It'll definitely be through business networking. Yeah. But also with your Give It 10, I don't know if any of the rest of you have seen any of Jenny's posts about Give It 10, but I especially remember that one you did where you were encouraging us to like roll on the ground, get up, get down, roll again. And I just, it was so invigorating. And I don't even know if it was like a cold time of year, but I just felt so cozy and, and it's so great for balance. And anyway, sorry, I'm waffling on now, but, um, <laughs> but I suppose it was with your Give It 10 because it, you know, I, as a physio, I'm all about movement and enjoying, yeah, enjoying movement really and fluency of movement. And, and all your Give It 10 things were just like really small, achievable, but like, wow, ideas. So yeah, I've really loved you for that. So thank you for coming to talk to us and sharing yeah. your wisdom. Oh, and all your lovely recipes. I love seeing those and you've got a dog. So yes, there are loads <laughs> of things I'd love to run to ask you about and hear about. So, so how, how did you get into what you're doing at the moment? Thanks, Lee. It was, it's absolutely lovely to be here and, and thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Yeah, we'll talk more about Give It 10 as we go on and um, I'd love to inspire people to get, get some Give It 10 in their day. But um, yeah, a very quick potted history. I grew up in Cornwall. I joined the Air Force, spent 22 years in the Royal Air Force. Um, and through being in the Air Force, I got a real passion. I wasn't into fitness in the Air Force. I was into fitness in that I did it, but it wasn't my job. So when I came out of the Air Force, I thought, what, what do I enjoy doing? What do I want to do for, you know, when I grow up? <laughs> and the Air Force um, trained you to do something that you're interested in. I was interested in fitness, so I qualified as a personal trainer, specialising in pre and postnatal at the time. Um, then I set up um, postnatal boot camp in Lancaster and Morecambe, Pram Power, which um, which maybe you might have known me through yes, Pram Power. I remember <laughs> that as well. Yeah, maybe that's when I first, yeah, because I just thought, wow, this is such a great idea. And I loved the phrase as well, Pram Power, because Pram Power, yeah. sometimes we just need that help, don't we, to get going again, because it's such a life changing event, isn't it, having a child? New it really is. House. And I just... I, I absolutely love doing that. It was so em empowering for me and the women that came along, just getting them back outside every day, even in the rain and the snow, we did pram power sessions, getting people out, getting people meeting each other. You know, we'd be stopping on the prom to change nappies and, you know, but it was, it was lovely. It was a really um, it was a lovely space to be in. And from then I kind of transitioned more into some personal training stuff and then started to work um, online. Um, but really, uh, yeah, what I, what, what I want people to do is just keep it simple because sometimes health and fitness can seem so overwhelming and so uh, confusing that, you know, sometimes you have this um, procrastinate action, I call it, you know, where you're sort of procrastinating so much over what you do that you don't actually take action. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> That's really good. So, procrastinate action. Gosh. Yeah. So you just kind of get overwhelmed with seeing everything all the time. You think, oh, I should do this. I should do that. I'm looking at this. And then you just don't do anything because it's just, yeah, it's overwhelming. Um, so I started to say to people, well, you know what? If in doubt, give it 10. And they were, what, what does that mean? And I said, um, I said, well, I don't know, really. Just what, what about doing 10 press-ups on your kitchen counter? What about doing 10 step-ups on the bottom step in the morning? What about doing uh standing on one foot for 10 seconds while you're cleaning your teeth you know just little things like that um and I decided to say to people, give it 10 give it 10 <laughs> doing my um, pelvic floor now as well thinking pelvic floor the traffic lights you know all that kind of stuff squeeze your bum when you sat at the computer um and and I walked into a shop one day and it was quite funny I felt like it was in comfort and I walked in and I was just browsing through some stuff and the lady at the counter was like oh it's give it 10 Jen oh. <laughs> I was just like oh I like that <laughs> um and uh yeah so that kind of a friend of mine sort of mentioned it she said oh she started calling me give it 10 Jen, give it 10 Jen and that just kind of stuck so um that's me on Instagram although I don't get on Instagram all that much but um yeah so and and um I, I'm in danger of just keep waffling about this because I can talk about this forever <laughs> that's great. I'm loving listening and and yeah I mean who doesn't want to know how to be well really and look after their body and just and, and just simple and achievable as well. Achievable stuff, yeah. The biggest, the biggest shift in what I've been doing recently, actually, is I've been saying to people, "Give it ten for years." Mm -hmm. um, people love it for a bit, and then they just kind of forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, you don't sort of. People mean to do it, like we all mean to do exercise, we all mean to eat well, and we all mean to, you know, have these health, health, healthy habits in our life. But life's busy, and we just get 
you know, overwhelmed with everything. We get busy. We don't, when we get lying in bed at night and think, oh, you know, I didn't do my 10 minute meditation. I didn't do my 10 deep breaths. I didn't do my 10 bum clenches when I was sat at the computer. You know, just not that you don't want to, you just forget. So yeah. I've been looking a lot more recently into behavioral science and, and that the habit formation um, and how so like that, linking it from one thing to another so it flows do you mean or yeah but basically so it's forget, almost yeah but basically making it a way that you you can't forget about it so how do you actually get people to to make these healthy habit changes in their life I talk about it a lot on my Frazzle to Fabulous course I run a 10-week program a couple of times a year next one starting on Monday <laughs> yeah um, and actually if anybody's listening now I mean it's what day is it today's 7th isn't it September it, the 7th, yeah. so that's starting next Monday the 12th so if people want to join that program 10 weeks they need to contact you today probably don't they or tomorrow as soon as possible really because there's a little bit of onboarding but um yeah that's 10 weeks of, of, of habit um formation around health and exercise lots of lovely nutrition work a lot on gut health um, and we take people from sort of really doing no exercise at all, working on a lot of stability, mobility stuff, work that, that I know that you're really passionate about, Leah. Because um, you know, since COVID, particularly, I think that for me, I have just seen an epidemic of unsteadiness when I'm doing home visits. People are just because people didn't generally go outside and not just older people, although it's been catastrophic, I would say, for older people, some older people. But even like for myself, just because I had such poverty of physical experience for two years, my balance isn't nearly as good as it was three or four years ago. I've started doing a few things for myself. So we'll maybe talk a bit more about that in a minute. But yeah, I mean, it, balance and stamina are so important because one fall can change the course of your life, can't it? Oh, you know, yeah. it's not falling over, it's a fall. And that event can be, you know, whether it's a broken wrist, if we've got osteoporosis. And, uh, you know, I guess most of us listening to this are going to be women, aren't we? So, you know, as, as our hormones, do you talk about like hormones and menopause and stuff? Yeah. Well? Yeah. So I'll let you talk. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, the effect of estrogen in our body, estrogen affects every single cell in the body. So, you know, for years, I've got a video actually on YouTube um, all about um, hormones from the age of 35, because people don't realise that symptoms they start to suffer from the age of 35, you're not getting your hot flushes and your night sweats again, but quite often you're feeling tired, you can't sleep, you're, you've got a bit of brain fog, perhaps some IBS related problems, all little things that don't seem like an awful lot until you hit 45, 50, when you start to hit the hot flushes and stuff, and you think, oh, it's menopause, but actually estrogen starts declining from about the age of 35 um, and little things start niggling away and actually they are estrogen deficiencies um, not to say you need to start taking HRT or anything back then but there's a lot you can do to um, I'm in danger of going down a whole different route here we're talking about hormones because I get very passionate about um, menopause and perimenopausal stuff as well but um, there's a lot you can do to help your body at that point and reducing stress, getting better sleep, eating lots of phytoestrogens in your vegetables and things mm. will definitely help keep those um, resources topped up. Um, uh, yes, but like you say about the falls and things, a lot of people are through um, lockdown as well. Don't get me wrong, I love Joe Wicks, but because a lot of people started leaping around doing all this stuff out here, but not really working on their stability um, lots of people love to think they can lift weights and do press ups and not necessarily think they can do press ups, but they try and lift weights or go running. But actually, until you've locked down your body a bit and got some stability sorted, you very quickly pick up injuries, um, you know, hips, knees, ankles, uh, glutes, you know, we sit on a bum all day long and it's the biggest muscle in the body. So without doing some strengthening work, other little muscles start to tend to take over and you'll know this is a physio and you, you quickly get injured um, because of a deficiency yeah. in your core. Yeah, and I think that tightness, because it's not just strength, is it's extensibility as well, and flexibility and springiness and, and the tissues being well perfused and juicy and it kind of fall really in, in a good way. And, and and I think that's when I quite often see people, especially people who've had cesarean section or maybe appendix scar when they've been younger, and especially after C-section, you know, they've healed up, they take up running, and then maybe suddenly they've got a knee problem or an ankle problem. 
And actually, then when I examine them, it's because their abdominal scar is really tight and stuck. So they don't have the hip extension anymore, maybe mm -hmm. only on one side. It's really interesting sometimes when you see how somebody's been stitched up and then kind of like tight at the end, at one end. So they've lost their hip extension on that side, especially on the right hand side, if they've already had their appendix removed when they were younger. So you lose some hip extension, so it alters your stride, rhythm, length, um, and there'll be another word which I can't find now with my menopausal brain fog. But, you know, <laughs> so then they turn up to me with a sore knee, but actually it's the cesarean section scar, for example, that's tight. So I think, like you say, the preparation before we start running, because it's so wonderful to just run, isn't it, and be free and... I'm going to get onto rolling now, but you know, it's, it's lovely to do it. But if we're, if our body isn't ready to do it, then potentially it's quite risky, isn't it? So to have some guidance, I suppose, especially if you're doing something over like a 10 week program so that so that you've got some ideas where to start, I suppose, and do it safely. Do it safely. Start gradually. It's not sexy. A lot of the stuff when you just kind of, you know, doing stability work and people love to, you know, 10, um, sorry, like 30 day ab blasts and 30 day plank challenges and all the rest of it. They, they have their place. Don't get me wrong. But sort of going back to that habit formation, they're a, they're a bit of a one hit wonder. So, um, yeah, so give it give it 10 is kind of coming back to what to, to that give it 10 thing. I, I, I really want to try and get people to make this a habit for life my passion is to get the world giving it 10 and to get that you know as you know be the next you know, middle-aged mum menopausal mum version of joe wicks but um getting yeah. people to give it 10 and the habit formation i i kind of to try and get that into people's lives i've, I've made a little, bit, a little bit of it is it a mnemonic out of the word 10 so mm -hmm. t-e-n so when you think about what you want to do Think about something that could be a trigger, the T. So if you are cleaning your teeth, maybe cleaning your teeth is the trigger. Then you're going to write it down. So yeah, so absolutely. <laughs> and then you're going to make it easy. So a lot of people go straight into thinking they've got to go to the gym for an hour's spin class or, you know, they've got to do all these things that are, um, are going to be hard and lifting heavy weights and going out for a run and you know, the first, the very first step of creating a habit is making something easy. So rather than even doing 10 things, do one, do one repetition. So you, mm -hmm. your trigger is, I'm cleaning your teeth, I'm going to stand on one leg while I clean, you know, the top section, and then I'm going to stand on the other leg while I do the, the other section, you know, or I'm going to do one press up on my kitchen counter while the kettle boils. I'm going to do one. You know, sometimes it's so easy, it doesn't even feel like it's doing anything. But at the first stage of habit formation, we're not looking at necessarily creating that something that's going to have a, a massive impact on the body by doing one. What we're doing is creating the neural connection. It's impacting here, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's so clever. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it, it's it's the trigger that creates the habit that creates the then the need. Now, so that the end is the need for me. Mm -hmm. So you've got the trigger, you've got making it easy, and then you've got the need. And there's there's another little step as well after this. But the need is basically, you know, some people start an exercise class and they quickly give it up because it's not really important enough in their life or they don't see the need for doing it like a lot of people think they need to run um, and they run but they don't enjoy it so you know for me it's just like what's what would you what's the need for you as you get older you know especially for women maintaining sort of strength is a really important thing to do um, you don't necessarily need to lift weights um, but you do need to maintain that strength. So um, what is it that you need to do to, to um, get the outcome you want? You know, I'm all about goals, but I think, you know, outcomes is a better word than goals. Mm. So what outcomes do you want in your life and, and what outcomes do you want to sort of be repeated in your life? And if you want to stay strong, you want to play with your kids, your grandkids, mm. you want to be able to go on holiday without kind of like groaning and you know getting your belt to sunbed and kind of saying oh my word this is a bit tricky um you know what do you need to do so a lady the other day I, I put a little post on my Facebook group about um this 10 structure uh, or giving it 10 and um she said oh I was really inspired because I was talking about walking the dog because walking the dog's a brilliant one and um you know you're out walking the dog the dog's um you know having a sniff around a tree so why not do 10 squats while he's having a sniff around the tree yeah. if you go to this if you go walk on the same route and so many of us do um you know walk the same route when they're walking our dog it's like okay well when you pass the bench can I do 10 press-ups off the back of the bench can I do some tricep dips who cares <laughs> if you look silly you know <laughs> 
um, yeah. And this lady said, she woke up in the morning, she said, I couldn't figure out why I was aching this morning. And then she goes, and then I remembered I'd seen your post yesterday and I did 10 press ups on the gate post. Wow. And it made that much difference. That's amazing, isn't it? And fantastic that she oh, could you know, feel it, the difference the next morning. It made the world to me. But I said, you know, the, the, the thing is now, that's brilliant. Well done. The thing is now is to make that a habit. So the trigger is your gate post, mm -hmm. making it easy. Even if you're busy, even if you're rushed and the dog charges on, do one. It's just because you're creating the habit. So next time, if you've got a bit more time, you can do 10 or you can do three sets of 10 or three sets of five, or two sets of two or, you know, um, so make it. So she, she'd done that. And then um, and I said, you know, you, you say a little mantra to yourself, you know, and you say it out loud. It's like when I pass a date gate post, I'm going to do at least one press up because I want to the need because I need to stay strong and healthy as I get older or, you know, kind of. Nice. making that a bit of a mantra to yourself and it, it mm -hmm. when you say these things out loud it again it uses different connections in the brain when you think it and when you say it out loud it's like sometimes when you think of something really good to say you it doesn't come out of your mouth <laughs> um the same way again it's I love brain work but it's it's a different way of thinking about it and the biggest step in this and it's not part of the 10 I think I need to add another little letter is actually to congratulate yourself so when we congratulate ourselves, um, we get a little dose of dopamine and dopamine is what we're addicted to as human beings. So dopamine, when your your ping goes on your phone and you go, oh, who was that? You know, it, we get a little drop of dopamine and that's why we get addicted to looking at it, because we get addicted to dopamine. We get addicted to things that make us feel good. Um, so by injecting a little bit of dopamine, we congratulate ourselves to get that bit of dopamine. It sounds daft. It sounds really daft, but if you do a give it 10 or a little bit of it or something, then at the bottom, at the end of it, then give yourself a little fist bump or give yourself a little thumbs up or give yourself a smile, whether it's externally or internally. Yeah. And by doing that, you're reinforcing the habit. And, and this is what I really want to get across to people. It's just like this habit formation is what's life changing. And doing that one will eventually lead to five, 10, 15, 100 but if you can start with one and give yourself a little bit of a fist bump, a pat on the back, a smile, think of think of what it you know, if, if you were to um, if something good happens in your day, you know, if you were to, um, you know, buy a lottery scratch card and win a tenner, what would you say? What would you do? Would you go, oh, great. Or would you go brilliant? Or would you go a little fist bump? That action is what you need to be doing when you do a habit that you want to create in your life. Um, and you know, give it ten, whether that's a give it ten habit, whether that's having a healthy breakfast, whether that's spending more time with your kids, whether that's doing a meditation, whether that's reading something that you want to improve in your life, a healthy habit that you want to create in your life. And breaking bad habits is another thing that we haven't really got time for, but but creating a good habit, um, you need to you need to be um, congratulating yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in danger of like going on and on and on. But. Oh, no, I really love that. And I love that how just even doing one can be the start of a habit that can be life changing. And just, yeah, I guess your enthusiasm is so supported by research and experience. And that's just so, you know, I guess that makes me think, oh, I just needed to be helping me every day, really. So, so what I was just thinking, you've talked about Give It 10 and you've mentioned, um, the program the 10 week program so if people are going to ask you for help for them so do you work one-to-one -one or just in groups or how how would people ask you to help them because I could listen to you talk all day and, and let's <laughs> carry on talking I'm not trying to wrap this up but how would how would people find you and ask you if they wanted you to help them um the biggest thing is probably I've got a Facebook group give it 10 Facebook group um, so I try and inspire people in there to, to do stuff. I have a monthly membership. So um, the monthly membership is all about habits. So every month we work on a different habit challenge and I have an app and I kind of remind people every day to do that habit, habit, whatever it is. So we alternate between like a foodie type habit, a nutrition habit and a um, and an activity sort of habit, whether that's, you know, sleeping better, meditating, carbs, proteins, healthy fats, what you won't find me ever getting you to do is to count calories, to weigh food, to cut out things you enjoy. For me, it's just about 
what little tweaks can we do that will potentially take us on a whole new route in life just by doing some you know simple things so um yeah they the habit challenge group is all about a different challenge every month um that just kind of helps you to to make some better choices in your day um because especially as we get older it really does impact um the quality of our life going forwards is the food we put in our bodies the thoughts we're thinking the, you know and what's going on up here is a huge part that's why I spend a lot of time researching sort of brain stuff because it's a huge part of um you know the voices in our heads and how we speak to ourselves most of us wouldn't speak to the people we love the way we speak to ourselves so it's like speak to yourself like you're someone you love <laughs> you know yeah uh, and uh so yeah so I mean basically yeah the, the the monthly the monthly group is um you know really accessible it's 20 pounds a month um and you get recipes you get th- tw- 15 um, plant-based recipes 15 regular recipes snacks dinners lunches there's food plans in there menu plans shopping lists all oh, right um, so it makes it kind of easy to yeah it really does make it easy then the, the monthly challenge group there's a private facebook group for the monthly members we have a monthly whatsapp call um facebook call um uh you know zoom call and uh so i can just support everyone in the group and it's lovely the chat that's in there people sort of saying oh i'm working on this month how are you getting on kind of thing um some people dip in months and dip out months but but you know it's it's quite um accessible for everybody that uh that kind of membership the, the facebook group give it 10 is completely free if people just want to ch- jump in and get to know me a bit better then that's something they can do and of course frazzled is my 10-week course that i run tend to work run it three times a year in term times because I work with a lot of mums um, and people in general don't want to be sort of focusing too much through the holiday so we tend to have a course in September which is the one starting on Monday course in January and a course to start at Easter holidays and that tends to fit in quite well with people's lives so we have yeah. up to 10 sometimes 10 to 15 women on those um, courses mm-hmm. most people it's not weight loss necessarily but of course when you think better when you eat better when you move better most people lose about 16 pounds of stone in that course that's wonderful um, isn't it more importantly they feel better yeah <laughs> yeah well our body's not hanging on to stuff is it when we're feeling better and but i think that making small changes to how you eat it, i mean certainly that's been my experience anyway it's phenomenal just making some and the right changes for yourself as well I think you know when you talk about giving recipe ideas and meal plans and things it's so good because you're not it's not like a kind of crazy massive change to people's lives is it that's going to be just such hard work that they're going to have what was it procrast in action I really like that um (laughs) you know it's it's like how to make it easy for people to succeed isn't it and I really love that yeah and that's that's what it's got to be that's the give it 10 the you know the habit formation making it easy um feeling a need to do it and and you know giving yourself triggers to to make you know the the trigger could be you know when I have breakfast I'm going to throw on an extra tablespoon of flax seeds or I'm going to throw on a handful of blueberries or you know this stuff doesn't take extra time the biggest thing people tell me that I don't have time for exercise I don't have time for preparing fancy meals and And that's where I come in because it just it doesn't take time. Um, You know, I have a monthly I have a morning routine program as well, which is like a one of course people can buy. It's a 10 step morning routine. And it's all about building those little habits into what you're already doing in the morning Um, because we're busy. I mean, I'd love to people to have more time. And, you know, is that a saying is it that you should meditate every day? um for an an hour a day and if you don't have time to meditate you should be meditating for two hours a day you know it's that kind of Um, the other thing I was thinking of when you were saying that as well was and I don't know who to credit for this um I wish I'd thought of it I didn't someone else's thing but saying about if you if you listen to your body when it's whispering you'll never have to hear it scream and like that you know that's so simple and um and uh, uh, so and for me with my work as a physio when people come to me early on or even before they're having surgery it, you know it, it's in some ways you can't be too soon and you certainly it's never too late but if you tackle it sooner rather than later it's cheaper and easier I would say just like with your car when it starts to make a bit of a strange noise or you feel it's not quite right if you take it to a mechanic then and they have a look at it it's easier isn't it you don't get nasty surprises and um, and massive bills oh Um, yeah absolutely but you'll find this as well um Leah is that people will invest in their cars and get them fixed but they won't in their bodies you know it's and really it, odd and, and like we live here all the time don't we so it's like you've got to live 
yeah it's, so, it's uh, sorry no i say i know it's difficult because especially at the moment with the the um the way we're being squeezed from every corner for you know it, with our finances but um really investing in your health and your body is is never it is never wasted um because it is the only place you've got to live and uh and simple things like getting down on the floor and standing up every day could mean the difference between you know you being able to you know getting up from a fall or being able to stand up out of your chair or you know being able to wipe your own bum at the end of the day <laughs> Yeah, really well. And and I think things like that, getting up from the floor. So, I mean, obviously, Jenny and I don't know who's going to be watching this. It's on the internet for forever, isn't it? So, you know, feel free to use your common sense. But things like crawling and rolling, those basic movement patterns are really refreshing for our nervous system, aren't they? And, you know, when you look at an animal roll, it's not just functional, is it? Sometimes when you see a horse or a dog rolling on its back in the sunshine, you know, it's massaging its fascial tissue, it's giving all its tissues a gorgeous stretch, you know, lubricating the whole of its, its inner being, really, its sort of body and soul. And so, you know, if you are doing things like getting on, the, on and off the floor as you give it 10, you know, also, I, I, for me, there would just be scope for part of the, you know, sometimes I'd want to do it for kind of speed and energy and warmth and feeling my heart rate rise and, you know, and that pad potential to get breathless because maybe we don't do that so often as we get older. Um, but also it's an opportunity to roll and stretch and just be like, oh, this is so lovely. And, you know, yeah. feel into all those bits in my body that want to stretch and I'm doing it now, you can tell that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just such a gorgeous thing to do. And I think, you know, when we go to school as little children, we're encouraged all the time. It's like, sit still, don't do that, don't wriggle about. And But actually for a lot of people, wriggling about is really healthy. Um, you yeah. know, to move and stretch and yawn, another kind of socially unacceptable thing. You know, we get such a great stretch. If we could yeah. talk for hours, couldn't we? Sorry. So just can I recap then? So you've got your um, your Facebook group, which yeah. is called Give It Ten. Uh -huh. And you've got your app. So do people buy the app then or do they like pay each month to use it? Or I, sorry, I got a bit muddled with that. Yeah, no. So the app is part of the membership. So when they join as a member, I give them it's it's a, an app that um, that uh, you can't find on. You can't find it in an app store. It's something that I have to give you access to because mm. uh, it's kind of personal sort of to me. Um, and I like to um, sort of don't just put it out there for people to, 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 to get into. I, I like to kind of nurture people into it so they know what they're, they know what they're doing and everything. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, so I've got the, uh, so that's the monthly membership. Um, if people are not into that, that habit challenge, I do also have the opportunity to get people on as just recipes only members. So if all you want is to have some recipes delivered to your inbox every month, then um, you can have that plant-based and that, um, uh, so the plant-based recipes, 15 recipes, the regular recipes, and there's also a, like a nutritional resource I put out every month as well. So those kind of resources, those three resources will kind of hit your inbox every um, every month. But but also if you go onto the website, gohealthandfitness.co.uk, there's um, a free a free stuff tab. And if you click on there, you can actually get access to um, there's immune, there's an immunity support guide in there, which with some recipes talking about your immune system. There's my hormonal harmony training with some recipes and some talk to some stuff about, you know, your hormones and menopause. Um, there's a couple of other like bonus recipe guides in there just so you can have a look and see if you like the look of what I do. You know, the last thing I want to do is get people to sign up for something that's not going to, you know, value. They're not going to get value from. So I'm all about, you know, have a look at it first and see what you think and then yeah. jump into Frazzle or the monthly membership or or just come and join the Facebook group. Yeah. Oh, wow. I feel all springy and ready, <laughs> for action now. ready to give it 10. Really yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, well, I've only done four pelvic floor lifts while I'm sitting here. Oh, now I'm feeling like I might rub my ears for give it ten and some deep breathing. Um, so just briefly before we go, you put a post on the other day about your dog and how lovely it's been to have a dog. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Because I'm sure I could do with a dog in my life as well. Oh, really? And we've got dogs. She's normally <laughs> asleep on the chair behind me. She's probably in her bed. But um, yeah, you know what? Well, I was really resistant to getting a dog because I've had one in my family all my life um, mm -hmm. growing up and in a past relationship. But they are hard work mm -hmm. um, and they shed a lot. And, and my husband, um, is uh, allergic to fur and fluff and feathers and anything oh, like animal related yeah. uh, 
So over the years, we've had gerbils and guinea pigs and stuff. But even then, even though they've been upstairs sort of in the girls' rooms, he's he still suffered in the house, with, you know, um, with, with the dander in the house. Yeah, great word, that dander. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's the right word, isn't it? Dander. <laughs> Um, and then we were in the pub one a couple of years ago and this couple came in with this gorgeous little nutty grey dog and we said oh what on earth is that and they said oh it's a Bedlington Terrier um, and they said oh it's brilliant because it doesn't shed it's one of these hypoallergenic dogs I'm like, mm. hypoallergenic dogs what are you talking about and they said seriously no shedding he said I'm allergic to dogs and I'm absolutely fine so my husband was like oh okay so we went up and he was kind of like sticking his nose in his fur and he was just like well feels good feels okay <laughs> um so that started just to sort of think about getting one and then um yeah and then we, we found a, a neighbor who had one too and uh well someone in the village I sort of put a post out on Facebook and said does anyone know anyone with a Bedlington Terrier I'd like to sort of spend a bit more time around one and see the sort, sort of dog they are and see if my husband got on well with it and she came over to the house and you know he was like rolling around on the floor with it and absolutely fine and you know she's she's been fantastic for the family the girls have always wanted a dog so um, can't always get them to go out and walk him and walk her but uh, you know that's just kids but uh, they always will go out in the end but yeah it gets you out the house easy to do give it tens when you're taking a dog for a walk yeah. does get you out when you know you you know when, when perhaps you wouldn't normally and you know she's she's an absolute sweetheart we call her the cog because she's a cat dog she tends to like curl up in, in your lap asleep she's really oh, sweet oh, um, you couldn't do that with a big dog but she is yeah. you know she's just a sweetheart so uh yeah check check out my Facebook page and you'll see some pictures of Maggie <laughs> oh, thank you and I was thinking when you were saying about taking her out for a walk as well and the give it 10 and you know it gives you because dogs sniff don't they all the time and and you you know when you're saying about maybe doing press-ups off a bench or something and that's such a good way of using that time isn't it rather than feeling irritated that it's taking a long time and you know it's, it's like use that time for oneself and and I'm also remembering how when you're walking with a small child sometimes everything on the floor is of such great interest isn't it yeah. and and like it's so easy for me as an adult to think we're going from A to B whereas actually they're just at A and they're joy. just going it's just it's about the journey isn't it it's yeah about and um so so with that kind of give it 10 mentality there's real potential for wandering at the world as well isn't there while you're there just noticing the view or or yeah. the wood pattern in the bench or how your tummy's feeling or yeah it's a uh, you can yeah, I mean, give it to isn't necessarily about doing things sometimes it's about not doing something mm. you know just sitting outside and closing your eyes for 10 minutes you don't have to think oh I've got to meditate you know just close your eyes and let your mind wander you know um I did, uh, I know some people feel very self-conscious about doing things in public, you know, whether that's press ups and squats and stuff. I actually, at um, over lockdown, I did a video, it's, it's on my YouTube channel, Go Health and Fitness YouTube channel. Um, it's called Cure Size. And it was like 10 exercises you can do while you're standing in a queue, like because there was always these um, supermarket yeah. queues. And you can kind of do it really without anyone knowing you're doing it. I mean, pelvic floors, for example, you know, squeezing your butt cheeks, just standing on one foot. Mm -hmm. um, and I sort of did 10 exercises you can do in a queue without anybody kind of going what is he doing <laughs> but I found myself doing it standing in the queue rotating my ankles rotating my shoulders kind of clenching my stomach muscles even you know all stuff that you can do that's not like perhaps doing something that you might feel a bit more self-conscious about that's really good I like that with the children and I laugh about me doing things in public because they say mom what you don't realize is like a big light goes on above our head <laughs> so that people are noticing because I'm like no yeah. one's actually going to notice and um, and the other thing though I think for people like you and I whose passion is wellness and health and you know embracing that kind of aliveness it's okay if people do notice and ask isn't it because yeah then you know maybe that's their their bridge across into loving their body more and and being with it and I don't know anyway no you, you're right in fact we, we were at the airport last week um <laughs> we just came back from holiday um that's why I'm looking slightly more town than I normally do yeah you look fantastic um, <laughs> and you know we were sitting waiting for a flight and it was delayed I mean even if it wasn't is what I do anyway I just I don't sit at the airport I just walk I find a flight of stairs and I walk up and down it and I walk around the hall and you know, everyone's sitting there kind of slouch, reading, listening to headphones. And fair enough, if that's what you, I'm not telling everyone they've got to do this stuff. 
but I I just walked. I just walked. I, I got my, nearly my 10,000 steps in just walking around the airport, just walking. Okay. And, and I was like weaving in amongst the seats and people were like, oh, she's coming around again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I was like, nobody else was doing it. I thought, you know, if I'd felt really self-assured, I probably would have started doing a lunge walk, but I didn't take it that far. I was just walking, you know. Um, but then I'd stand and I'd kind of stand on one leg for a bit. There was a flight of stairs. So I walked up and down it a few times and just that you can fit these things into your day you know you really can when people think you can't you really can <laughs> and that lovely thing with 10 about need and and why we're doing it because you know yeah we want to be well um jenny this has been brilliant thank you so so much um, i've really enjoyed talking to you thanks leah it's been brilliant and if any if you've got a question for jenny should they just put that underneath the recording um yeah. and and Please, if it's easy for you, will you put links to your Facebook group and, and your courses and so on? So it's easy for, is that easy for you to do, to put links in so people yeah. can find you easily? Okay. Yeah, no problem at all. And um, thank you for listening, everyone. If you haven't seen Mandy Gallagher's um, the, the little tour I did around her workshop, Tin Box Angel, last month, do have a look at that. It was just gorgeous seeing all her lovely leatherware and smelling those bags. It's like, <clears throat> going in smell amazing. Um, sorry for a vegan, and I know some of you are because it's like vegan skincare, but it, it did smell lovely. And then next month, and I'm going to put my glasses on to read this because I don't want to miss any of the details. Next month on October the 5th, which is Wednesday at quarter to 11, but I'll share it in the group. Um, Susan Crawford is going to be in conversation with us here. To, um, Susan is a knitwear designer, author, fashion historian and business owner as she knows so much about so much so um yeah do do join us again then on the fifth and um yeah 28 day challenge there will be gorgeous massage techniques and uh, and look out for jenny's details thank you jenny i'm going to turn the recording off now mm -hmm. and, um yeah thank you so much it's been amazing having the time thank you thank you